Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to our Winter Devotions, our big questions. And this week's big question, who is God? God is Trinity. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5 says this, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. When I was growing up, I had a friend called Mitch. Mitch would borrow my Matchbox cars, but never give them back. When I beat him at Mario Kart, he would accidentally press the reset button. When I shared something personal, he'd always tell other people. Friends, what do we call people who live this way? Our teenagers would say that he is fake. Adults would say he's a hypocrite. We say things like, Mitch can't be trusted because he's double-minded or he's two-faced. But have you ever wondered, is God like this? I mean, when we see the evil of this world or feel the burden of suffering or experience the shame of broken relationships, we're tempted to think that God is not good, that he's double-minded, that he can't be trusted. And so we need to remember who God is. The Lord our God is one. That is, there is one God in heaven and earth, and all other false gods don't exist. But Christopher Wright, a commentator, says something interesting. He says, when God says he is one, he's not just saying that he's the only God, that's monotheism, he's actually describing his character to us. God's is one, or God's oneness, means his character never changes and he can always be trusted. This week we will read in the Bible that God is three persons, Trinity, Father, Son and Spirit. But he is not three gods with three different plans, with their own motivations, who seek their own glory. No, there is one God and his character is one. That is, he has a unity of his will. He has integrity. It's his oneness. We see God's oneness in his plan. God remains consistent for all eternity. You know, from Genesis to Revelation, his plan is to save humans from sin so they can live with him forever. God's oneness is seen in his unwavering character. His steadfast love and his faithfulness means that he will always keep his promises. And God's oneness is seen in his purpose. He works for the good of those who love him and for his own glory. When God's people first heard this, Deuteronomy 6, they were entering the promised land. All they could see were hostile people with powerful armies who worshipped false gods. They were tempted to think that God is not good, that God had forgotten his people, that God doesn't keep his promises. And therefore, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5, this was to be a prayer, the Shema, a daily reminder that God is one. And even when it looks like the complete opposite, God's character never changes. He never forgets his people. He never breaks his promises and he can always be trusted. And ultimately, we see this in Jesus as he goes to the cross. He is single-minded, focused on the plans of the Father and the Father's glory. God is one. And for us today, when we see the evil of this world, feel the burden of suffering, or experience the shame of broken relationships, when we're tempted to doubt that God is really good, we must remember, no, God is still good. God can be trusted because the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, we see that God never changes and God can also always be trusted. Also, as God is one, undivided in his character, he also calls his people to a oneness in devotion to him. That's what verse 5 is talking about. We're called to love God in our single-minded and undivided way. It's not enough to answer the question, who is God? You see, if this is the God that we worship, then he is worthy of every aspect of our being. He is worthy of all of our love and deserves it. You see, this prayer doesn't just teach us who God is. It reminds us that we need to love God and ask him to change us. 
to ask God to realign our desires so we would give up our personal ambition and seek to love only the things that God loves. It's to pray for God to cultivate and to grow us in a devotion that goes beyond rites and rituals to a living a life of worship. And this prayer is for God to redirect our hearts, our talents, our treasures, our time, so that we sacrifice them for his service and the advancement of his kingdom. So our fallen and broken world would see God's undivided character in our undivided love and devotion to him. Friends, as we start our winter devotions, we've asked, who is God? And the Bible answers it in a most profound way. He's better than my friend Mitch. In fact, he's better than any human. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. His character never changes, and he can always be trusted. Let's finish by saying the living and active prayer. Gracious Father, you have saved us with a wonderful and powerful salvation. Your word is living and active. Today we have heard you speak. So help us to not harden our hearts, but to live it out. Forgive our failures, renew our wills, awaken our joy and transform our lives. Make our faith living and active. In the name of your Son and by your Spirit. Amen. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to week one of our winter devotion. We have started thinking about God is Trinity. Uh, what a great encouragement we've had from Deuteronomy. And uh, today we've got uh, Tim and Mel with us to share their reflections on our wonderful God. And so, Mel, over to you. Uh, you've heard Deuteronomy read. We've had some reflections on God. Um, how has God's unwaving character struck you? Yeah, I think it's a really good reminder that uh, when we feel like things aren't going the way we want them to, uh, whether they just haven't gone according to our plan or whether things just seem to be spiralling, life is hard, uh, and challenging, um, and it's, sometimes that's really discouraging. Uh, it's a good reminder that God is constant, uh, that He is uh, He is someone who is constant and unchanging in His character. And so, when things aren't going the way I hope they'll go, um, we can have hope and trust that God is still the one who's in control. Yeah, thanks, Mel. And Tim, we've heard about God being a better friend than Mitch. Um, what are your reflections on God? Uh, after you've heard this devotion? Yeah. Um, oh, I think the thing that stands out for me is that God's uh, oneness provides me with great security. Um, I don't have to worry about knowing whether God's having a bad day or a good day and how I'm going to find him. Um, the God that maybe one day if I'm, a, if I'm a grandfather and my kids have children, uh, if they meet God, uh, then the same God that they meet is the God that I meet and that previous generations before me have met. And so that provides me with great certainty uh, because I know that when I approach God, um, I guess in some ways it's fearful because I know that uh, exactly what uh, God will not tolerate. And so that means that uh, he's someone to be revered, he is Lord, uh, but it also gives me great hope because I know of his character in the past. And I think that that consistency gives me confidence for the way that he'll treat me too. Mm. I love those ideas of certainty and confidence uh, when God reveals his character. Uh, Chris also uh, made an interesting reflection that we're called to love God uh, in a single-minded and undivided way. Um, Mel, um, where are, what have you been thinking about in terms of that idea and how might you want to think about change to follow God in an undivided way? Yeah, I think my time and my intention is constantly divided. It's constantly divided between what's happening in front of me, what I'm thinking about for next week and next month and next year, 
Uh, it's divided between three children and a husband and a dog who desperately wants attention all the time. Uh, and so it's hard to uh, think about, like the concept of being single-minded um, is quite a difficult one when you think about the different um, aspects of your life that um, take your attention all the time. Uh, and they're good things to think about and be involved in, but God needs to be the one who is uh, foremost in that and I think our single-minded devotion to God means that we prioritize other things rightly after him uh, that's not easy to do and I was definitely challenged reading through this uh, devotion and having to think about where are my priorities and what are priorities that I have that are that are me and self-interested rather than God and God interested and in what he wants me to be focusing on. Um, and sometimes that's hard to discern and sometimes that's easy to discern and I just don't want to make a change because I like how things are. Um, and so I've definitely been challenged thinking about what does it look like to be single-minded with God as the focus of that uh, as I make plans for the future. Yeah, and it's interesting as we read the Old Testament, like Israel really struggled to be single-minded. I think the the disciples in the early church needed this reminder too. Like, it's, I don't think it, I don't think the cross makes it um, perfect. It's still a, it's still a battle. Um, Tim, what are your thoughts, mate? What are you? How have you been thinking about that undivided love of um, a life in service of God? Yeah, look, I, I do find it hard. Um, I mean, even just thinking about um yeah in the end when you do things who are you doing them for um and so am i doing it in service to god or am i doing it in service to myself even just speaking like in a context like this uh in a video that's going to go to the rest of church um i've got the desire to be honest and to talk about yeah sure i am divided like I, I struggle um, to prioritise things that are actually um, good things uh, for me leading my family, caring for my wife, caring for my kids well, um, as opposed to my own self-interest, but even uh, just wanting to say the right things in a meeting like this um, that makes me look like a, a Christian that's got things together and not someone that's actually... Um, yeah, broken, says dumb things, uh, does silly things. Um, yeah, so being undivided and knowing actually God's opinion, I'm serving him, that's what it's all about. Uh, and the way I look, uh, whether, whether that's good or bad, isn't of relevance. What's of relevance is whether I'm serving God. Mm. Thank you, guys. Now, um, Love you to think just as we come to a close, um, how would you describe uh, the God of the Bible that we've seen today as he's revealed himself as um, the Lord our God, the Lord is one? How would you describe it to someone who's yet to follow Jesus, someone who's uh, maybe considering but not, you know, not used to hearing God reveal himself? What are your thoughts, Mel? Yeah, I was thinking um, actually this term uh, in chapel at work, we've been... Uh, this constant theme of God is faithful and worthy of our trust. And I think that's what I would, would go to, that um, he is faithful. He is constantly acting in our best interest. Uh, he has shown himself to be faithful throughout history. That hasn't changed. Uh, and he is worthy of our trust. Uh, and in a world where we're not quite sure who we can trust and why we should trust them, having a God who's worthy of our trust is quite a significant thing and is worth looking into. Um, why mm. Why is he worthy of our trust? And I think the Bible has some good answers there. Over to you, Tim. What are your thoughts? Um, oh, certainly, I think uh, the I touched before on the fact that God's character is um, um, certain uh, because of the way he's acted in the past. Um, and that gives me confidence uh, that when I talk about God to someone, I'm not actually taking a pot shot. I'm not trying to read the tea leaves about mm, I think God will treat you that way because I th he's, because I've read in the past. I have confidence so I actually can say things. God is loving. God is a God of mercy. He really genuinely will forgive you if you come to him in repentance. Uh, and I can say that um, 
knowing my life is shaped on those truths and so therefore uh, you can have absolute confidence that you can shape your life on those truths too. Mm. Well, we definitely have been warmed by this passage uh, as we start winter, as the days get shorter <laughs> and darker. Uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He is undivided. Christ was undivided in going to that cross. And uh, what a great saviour. I, lo I love Chris's last words. God is better than my friend, Mitch. In fact, he's better than any human. The Lord our God, the Lord our one, he's one. His character never changes. He can always be trusted. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you, Mel. Thank you, Tim. Let me pray our living and active prayer as we finish, and then we'll say goodbye. Let's pray. Gracious Father, you have saved us with a wonderful and powerful salvation. Your word is living and active. Today we've heard you speak. So help us to not harden our hearts, but to live it out. Forgive our failures, renew our wills, awaken our joy and transform our lives. Make our faith living and active. In the name of your Son and by your Spirit. Amen. Have a good day, all.